folks to uh, if anybody else is going to join us, which I see some folks are just dropping in. Let me turn off the waiting room. And a quick shout out to all my art appreciation students. There's so many of you joining us today. So thank you for being here. Good to and see And also you. to my students as well. And Meryl's here. Thank you for coming to join, join us, Meryl, from the library. All right. Well, I think it's still uh, it's a good time to start. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today on Friday, November 20th. Um, I just want to um, take a moment to acknowledge the land that we stand on is not not necessarily our land it is uh, belongs to uh, to the folks who have caretaken this land for centuries well before uh, any of my my relatives come here. Um, and if you're interested, there is also a land map um, app that you can find on the web on the web that will indicate uh, where you live, uh, whose land it actually belongs to. I particularly stand on the Snohomish folks uh, land, and uh, depending where you're at, you might be on the Snohomish or you might be other tribes. Um, first off, I'd like to say thank you, uh, everybody, for joining us today. This is our uh, first uh, online art gallery reception for uh, our college. Um, I think in this time, we're all trying to pivot and find ways to uh, find engagement and to use the technology in a meaningful way. So um, my, myself, I am Min Carrico. I am co-chair and faculty of the visual arts at Edmonds College. Um, we have uh, Sue Danielson, our guest artist, uh, who's uh, installed a site-specific and a site-responsive exhibit. And we have Adi Asif, who is moderating the chat and also our co-host. Um, she is the uh, co-chair co of visual arts and faculty along with me in the visual arts. And uh, we also have Lorenzo in the room. Um, Lorenzo is um, videotaping uh, the event uh, for us. And uh, just a little quick uh, house cleaning business. Um, this event is being recorded uh, for documentation and for uh, uh, to assemble a video, a shorter video uh, later that we'll put on the website, also for other students who cannot attend today so that if, if they want to have some extra credit, they can uh, review this uh, at their convenience. But I do thank you everybody for who's coming for the live event. Um, I think it's a great uh, turnout um, and it's a great way to um, you know, connect with folks. Um, if you have questions, please drop them in the chat box. Um, Adi or myself will be moderating the chats and then uh, we'll feed the questions to Sue. Um, it's, uh, it's open style. So anybody, you can drop a question anytime. Just, you know, if it pops up, uh, just drop it in the chat box and we'll uh, get to it. Um, and just, a, just a note, um, Matt, Sue is uh, maskless uh, inside the studio um, as, and then uh, with uh, Lorenzo, but they're maintaining a safety distance um, a little bit larger than recommended by the CDC. So, um, but we're trying to follow all the protocols, which is kind of like how we got here today uh, in the gallery. Um, I'm just going to share my screen real quick and show you that um, if this was a regular reception, this is where we would be. The art gallery is located in the library, which is on the third floor of Linwood Hall. Um, it's tucked inside as part of the library. Um, uh, and the library isn't large. It's about 600 square feet. Um, Sue and I were discussing um, her installation to be in this room. And of course, uh, in the course of all the COVID and the pandemic, we had to change our uh, process uh, and pivot uh, very heavily. Um, sorry, I want to stop my sharing. And so uh, what we, what ultimately what we did, um, Adi and I discussed it and we opened up the, um, uh, the studio, uh, Meadowdale 107, which is our, our three-dimensional studio. We have uh, numerous power tools and we can build a lot of different little things in that studio. And uh, since we have limited access to uh, classes on campus, we decided to turn that into a pop-up gallery. And so um, in conversation with Sue, um, you know, she came in and said like, I showed her the space and it's like, what can we do with this? Um, and I think this is the probably a good time to have Sue give us a tour 
Um, this is why, partly the reason why you see two Sues on the on the meeting. She has one on her laptop and then one on her handheld, uh, but they're both in the same room. And she's going to provide us with a little tour and details of the exhibit to kind of give you the experience of what you would do or what would happen when you walked into the room. Sue, you want to take it away? All right. Well, this is all experimental, so bear with us. <laughs> and um, I just want to start off before I do the tour of, of thanking everyone on the, the team here that has made this um, such a pleasure to, to take place from men and all our discussions and brainstorming about what to do. Tim Cross, who just logged on, um, helped with the installation and brainstormed as well. Adi and of course, Lorenzo, who is here filming. He's, you know, hanging out over there. And um, yeah, it's just been a pleasure to work with you all. So here we go. So I'm gonna um, start here where um, you come into the room and this is an installation or part of the installation that I think of me as memory cubicles. And these, uh, these um, objects represent different memories that you or I might have. Um, I use memory a lot in my work. It's malleable and um, easily corrupted, which um, came as a shock to me. <laughs> I used to think that it was like a video machine and I could recall things perfectly and there wouldn't be any problem. Um, but of course we all know that was um, naive. And so all of these little compartments contain different elements that um, I think of memory as elements of perspective that change our perspective throughout our lives. Even the same memories get changed as we move through our life and we have different perspectives about what happened. We gain experience. And so this is just a playful uh, play on memory. This is also utilizing the grid of these shelves I'm gonna turn this sideways. I just remembered I was supposed to do that for Lorenzo. Um, and so I'll just take you through this a little bit. There's all sorts of things that might jar your memory. And so this is, this is when life is um, structured also and um, things are reliable. And then we have things like the pandemic come along and they start to shift. Um, this might also represent, you know, the shift in attitudes that is, that's going on with the Black Lives Matter. We have all sorts of things throughout our lives that happen that shift our perspective on life. So these um, are essentially mappings of location, of place. They're created out of rubbings and marks. Um, they mimic a paper map. So they're not the kind of map um, of land, but a, a map of, of experience. And if anybody has any questions, please. Uh, send those to Adi and she'll share those. A lot of my work involves using twisted grid. So um, I utilize that grid that existed here as um, a calm part of life. But when things get confusing and complex, the grid gets a little twisted. And um, this is sort of a play on that concept. Sue, I have a question for you. Okay. Um, how much of this work was, obviously it was assembled on site and in relationship to the 
existing structures in the in the space. Um, how much of it was created on site as well? For example, the painting. Did you do that in the room? Did you bring these objects and items to the location? Um, I'm just curious how much of the work occurred in your studio and then how much of it occurred in the space itself. Yeah, thanks for that question. So um, most of this was um, comprised of objects that I had already made. So the, the paintings were completed ahead of time and um, a lot of the objects existed before I brought them in. I didn't know when I showed up here with the objects, what I was gonna do exactly with them. I, I had an idea about this area over here. Um, the structure certainly wasn't planned out at all. I just knew I was gonna work with the materials and um, the power tools <laughs> and, and integrate them into the, into the piece. And um, the structure, um, I'll sh share some images later on, but this, the structure is um, a reuse from an installation that I did last year where um, these pieces were um, created in a structure that you could walk into. And so I just reassembled them here in this, in this way. Um, you'll see from the, the images later how um, differently it was used in the last installation. And the crochet pieces that are part of this were created before I came. And in reality, because of um, COVID, access to this room has been very limited. So I, it, it's not um, like a, um, a residency where I would be here all the time and having the opportunity to create while I was in the space. I like that idea of residency though. Yeah, that would be fun. Have you ever had a resident <laughs> artist? Anyway, no. <laughs> mute. Okay, I'll mute again. I like hearing from you, Tim. Oh, yeah. I like hearing from you, too. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. That's Tim Cross. He's our painting Yay. and drawing instructor. <laughs> drawing this. Uh, and so just to give some context right. uh, to folks, um, is that you know we provided Sue this open space um, and it's, it's site specific because we're not in our normal gallery uh, but then uh, what Sue did was take it to a next level which is basically site responsive um, trying to find works that she has at her in her studio and then trying to combine it with the materials that we have in our studio um, there's objects that are covered um, like the black, like the crocheted piece where underneath the black cloth, it's all like materials that belong to the studio. And then there's like uh, some uh, air ducts that come up from, come down from the ceiling, which are also incorporated to it. So there's this blend between um, the space between her stuff and our stuff. And it's almost where you can't see where the, uh, the difference is. Um, so it's kind of like the seamless part. Looks good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks. So it, it so was it, it a was lot of fun to, to um, come into the space and um, with a, well, Tim helped me carry everything in here. <laughs> it was boxes and boxes <laughs> and things boxes. and then to uh, I think you're muted. Sue, we lost your audio. Can you hear me now? Feedback. Yeah, I'm yeah. turning off the phone. Off. There we go. So can you hear me now? Yes. Thank you. Hello? I'm here. We're here. We're here. All right. We're here. <laughs> um, could you hear me talking about bringing objects in when I arrived? Did that come through? 
That's where it stopped. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, um, yeah, Tim helped with the installation. I brought a box, a bunch of boxes and the fabric and the wood and, and the video and the drawings and the paintings and, um, responded to the space. And it was, um, both challenging and fun to be able to do that. It, it, that is a new process to me to come into a space and just, uh, respond to the, the site in such a short period of time. I, I did do an installation a few years ago at um, Barbara Robertson's project, Garage Studio Space. Um, but I um, was there over a number of weeks doing that installation on a daily basis. This was um, because of COVID, we weren't able to get into this building very often. And so um, I think I was here three, three different visits before I finished this. So it, it went together fairly quickly. Uh, did the concept for your exhibit evolve over the course of the installation period? Did you have a very clear concept going in and you were able to articulate that through the installation or were there any new, um, new meaning uh, coming from it? Um, uh, not really anything new. Um, do you want to go ahead and um, put the image up, the first image up? Sure. Um, my work is always about playing with memory. Um, it's a response to life. And um, it's often layers and layers of line or marks. And um, the image that will come up here is, is a 12 by, 7 by 12 foot drawing that I did about five or six years ago. Um, for some reason, the image isn't showing up, Audi. Are you able to see that, Min or Tim? I see, it looks like a browser window. Interesting. Uh, let me try that again. I'll pull it up a different way. OK. Um, so the, the first piece that will come up is a large piece. Um, and I used to work very large. Um, and that piece is called When the World Wasn't Round. Part of the reason that I um, chose that to share with you today is because it does represent a specific incident in my life where it was someone that I was close to um, died. And so this was my response to that um, circumstance. Um, so it's just about making layers and layers of mark. And, and those are shifting perspectives and emotions and um, at just the way that we, we walk through life. So that, that concept of shifting um, perspectives is always in my work. And um, I went, about three years ago, I went on a trip to New York and I went to something called Spring Break Art Fair, which if um, you've ever had a chance to go, it's pretty trippy, <laughs> at least when I was there. Um, it was two floors of a um, office building that were empty and every room and every place in that space was curated and mostly it was installations. There were um, some rooms that had paintings, but it, it sort of blew my mind. And it was the first time that I thought about taking my paintings in a different direction and creating them in three-dimensional space. So this is sort of the culmination of that process of envisioning um, the 2D work in the 3D space. Sue, can you talk about the uh, materials that you use for that piece? Uh, the, the, when the world wasn't round piece yes. or the installation uh, for this one. Um, that has, boy, that has graphite, acrylic, um, acrylic marker, um, acrylic paint. I think those, I'm, I don't know if my memory can recall all of that <laughs> from, um, actually, I guess some, also some ink um, and um, this also, uh, you can see a little bit of the grid that I'm always playing with in this piece as well. It, it just shows up off and on throughout my work. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat box. We'll pass them on to Sue. Okay. Um, 
we share some more of your work? Yeah, you can, you want to bring up the, would this be image? I should also talk about the video. Um, actually, if you could bring up the, the um, images starting at 19, I think. Um, the video work on a previous um, installation I did last year, a lot of that um, installation got recalibrated, so to speak, into this installation. So they're, they evolve from one piece to the other. Um, this piece had um, a sculpture here by Tim Cross on the right. Um, so he was part of that installation. Um, the structure you can see, parts of that are being uh, utilized here at Edmonds, and um, this was a portal that you could actually walk through. You wanna to go to the next image, please? And on the right, it does, it looks flat, but you could actually, on the right, um, enter that portal. Um, the video was imagery that um, was a, it was a collaboration with uh, Lauren Dake, the video artist and myself. Uh, at that time, I didn't know how to do video, and we, um, collaborated on the imagery and she did all the video work on that. So it was projected on that um, portal and you could go in and the experience of being inside of it. So you can see on the right, you could actually go in there. And do you wanna to go to the next one? And then the experience of being inside of that was completely different. So the challenge here was to reshape that into this space um, since I didn't want to repeat what I had already done. So I broke that apart and brought it here and, and created this. And I should say, it's also important to me um, with these pieces, just to, for the most part, to use everyday objects. There are some of the artifacts on the shelves here that I make, but um, it's also fun to find objects that are um, ready-made that might be symbolic of different parts of our lives. Does anybody have any other questions? Um, yeah. Sharing one more image here. Okay. I should also say that um, probably 10 years or more ago, the imagery that I was using was um, house, shapes of houses that I abstracted. And so some of my um, paintings are also like these drawings back here where um, they, they look like um, spheres or shapes suspended in space. And that's uh, essentially, this is a 3D image <laughs> or a 3D realization of that. And, and there is an element of, um, you know, finding a comfortable place or a home that um, still resonates throughout the work that I create. We do have a few uh, questions. Okay. Uh, the first question is, what is the title of your video and the inspiration for that video? Um, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> you, I should know the name of that one. It's um, it's escaping me right now. Um, the inspiration for these. So this is a, um, a combination of um, animation. Actually, this one is just animation. Some of my videos are combinations of animations and um, videos that I take out in the world that I layer. Um, it's, it's mostly um, a thought process. <laughs> you know, I, get a, I have a lot of thoughts running through my brain at any given time, and this is how it feels. <laughs> so it's just that experience. So that's kind of scary, but <laughs> that's what it looks like inside my brain. <laughs> well, Angela, would it be possible for you to pan over to the video so that we can yeah, I'm going to take my computer over there. I turn my phone off. So. I'll also, 
I apologize. Hold on. I'm going to turn the lights out so you can see it better. Thanks. Can you tell us a little bit about the process of animating your your artwork? So this is uh, a combination of a drawing that I animated. I um, use an animation software um, and iMovie to make my to make my videos. So I just end up layering those over each other. Um, and I guess there is actually some video um, that I took. Um, layered into this. So this my this is comprised of um, things that I've drawn on and cut up and then I move those around so they're essentially a, a type of grid as well. And um, I move those around. There's some wire in there that I moved around and layered that on top of a drawing that was animated. And then you know you could see some water running through on the background of one of those as well, so. Is the video playing on a loop? Um, yes. What's the length of the video? This one's a couple of minutes. The one that was at the other installation, which I forgot to tell you the name of, um, Breath of a Distant Wind, that was a four minute loop. And Sue, do you have audio with uh, some of your video installations? I, I often do, I just don't happen to have it with this. Um, I have a video, uh, also another four minute video that played um, with my paintings at um, Wanda Hodges Gallery in May. And that, what, that had original sound composed by um, Greg Simbaldi. And you can take a look at that. If you go to, to my website, the, some more of the videos are up there and flow time is there. That's definitely a video where I'm trying to find this balance between too much information and not enough. So I'm looking for this balancing point um, that is a centering place in the middle of all the chaos that we experience, especially during the pandemic and um, with everything we're experiencing now, trying to find um, a place where we can find a ground. Right. So to address a question, uh, pop, go uh, ahead, Zadi. Questions. Uh, Sue, could you talk a little bit more about mapping and lines and how your experiences have, have led you to think about perception and memory? Oh, that's a big question. Um, so um, I'll, I'll address the mapping part. Um, that has always um, gone back to me for the um, um, the issue of finding home and mapping a place um, that might be home. Um, and so um, I do that. I've done that in the past through drawing, uh, just what might be called automatic drawing and layering and layering. And so it, it ends up being a meditation of a sort. And that evolved in part, uh, I would say directly because of the Duwamish River Artist Residency um, that I co-founded and co-run with Fiona McGuigan. And we started that back in 2012. And we take artists down to the shores of the river every year to interpret the landscape. And um, it's a fairly intense landscape. Part of that residency is also educational and we engage with the community down there. Um, the first year that we were on the river, we um, were hosted by um, the Duwamish tribe, a tribal member, James Rasmussen, came and welcomed us to the river and um, shared the history of the tribe in the Duwamish Valley. And we've engaged with industry down there and um, all aspects of the river. And part of that um, shifted the way that I work because I couldn't um, 
I couldn't absorb that landscape. It was a little overwhelming. So I ended up turning my chair to a bush. Not that a bush <laughs> in its complexity is less, less um, intense, but it was familiar, I think. And so um, that's where the drawing practice really um, became a, a part of what I'm doing. And so on the river, I would often take rubbings and start to incorporate the rubbings into the drawings and that involved into the mapping process. Another question, is there a particular message or statement that you seek to spread with your art? Um, I mean, I'm really hoping um, that it resonates with people. I mean, I'm not, um, you know, of course we can't control how people interpret our work, but um, I guess if I have a goal, it is to help um, people open up about um, different perspectives that could change their lives. And that seems, you know, particularly relevant now in this time where we're so polarized. If they're, you know, as a way of seeking um, perspectives. Thank you. And uh, one more question. Uh, do you have a favorite artwork that you've created? And if so, why is that your favorite? Oh. Um, <laughs> Well, I'll just say right now, this is my favorite. <laughs> I mean, that's sort of an easy, easy question, but I, uh, an easy answer, sorry. Um, you know, I, my opinion of my work, like most artists shifts from time to time. And um, <laughs> you know, I do, I, when the world wasn't round is is always going to be one of my favorites because it represents um you know a person who was near and dear to me um, i have a number of artworks that are um, essentially what i call portraits of people that i've lost over the years and um, those those will always be my favorite because those encapsulate the memories um, that i have about those people Right, and then that, that's an actually ex excellent segue because there was one question was um, about world wasn't round and how has that affected you emotionally in your past and your present? I think that's a, um, I think that's, I think we all, are, a lot of artists deal with that kind of same topic matter. Um, and, you know, I think um, the other question that came up um, was what, what part of your art piece was the most enjoyable for you to make? In this, in this um, installation? Yes, in this is installation. Ah, uh, uh, the jumble, I call it the jumble, <laughs> which is, uh, I mean, this, this is it. We, we don't have lights on right now, but um, the piece with the structures, I mean, that's a physical manifestation essentially of this video as well. Um, I somehow um, find chaotic imagery calming, um, whereas other people may not enjoy that so much, but um, it's something I always go back to. I try to simplify and sometimes I'm successful with my work in simplifying um, when I crochet pieces, which I've been doing a lot lately. Um, those are um, a much more simplified forms, but um, I always go back to the complex layers. That's just um, something I'm compelled to do. Certainly. Well, what I enjoyed when I first visited the uh, installation was, um, and for those who didn't notice, when you actually enter the room, the installation is meant to go counterclockwise when you walk in. And so you have the uh, the memory cubicle on your right, and then you kind of come around to the <clears throat> to the mappings, and then to the twisted grid that you spoke about. And it, I instantly, without even having spoken with you about it, I instantly had this connection of like of how it represents our time and pandemic, because if everything seemed fairly organized at the beginning and before the pan pandemic, and then suddenly the pandemic is there, is evident, it's obvious. And then suddenly there's this whole, you know, the um, the twisted grid that you talk about where everything's just like all jumbled and never fits together and 
kind of piece, you know, doesn't quite, you know, fit like a jigsaw puzzle piece. And then I think at the end, which I, I, if there's an opportunity for you to talk about is at the end where like you use the palettes um, uh, and almost yeah. kind of like restructuring the grid and it's almost like now this is our normal. Yeah, um, um, we, we lost the palette, but um, there is one still remaining. Um, yeah, so that is another part of the grid. Um, let's see. And then. So that that's what you, that's the section that you're talking about right there. Yeah, that little section. And it's almost like it's like we're coming out of the chaos, but the chaos is now informed like where where it's different. And it's reorganized in a much different way as opposed to how you started with the installation. Yeah, hopefully we're going to come back to some sort of order. <laughs> we're sort of adapting. I mean, that's the other part that this is talking about, that we eventually adapt and um, persevere. And I think that, you know, it's important to remember that within um, the difficult times, we're still finding joy. Most definitely. Um, I'd like to present another question, comment and question. Um, so your work appears very fluid, whether through drawing, painting, installation. Uh, what's your connection to water? Ah, uh, that, that's a good, that is a good question. Um, I mean, it's essential. I was born and raised in this area. Um, I, I've always spent a lot of time in the water. Um, I learned to swim at a very young age. So um, it does show up over and over in my work. Um, I went through a period of time a couple of years ago where everything I painted was blue. <laughs> and that really essentially was water. Um, can you, uh, I don't know if that fully answers the question. Can you <laughs> run that by me again? I, I think that addresses it. Um, if they have a follow-up question, feel free to ask. Um, but essentially it was just, what is your connection to water? Is that um, symbolic? Is that intentional? Um, and yeah, it sounds like it's just part of the environment. That yeah, you well, and it is both. I mean, fire is life. Um, it, and it is, you know, the, um, the environment's a huge part of um, my work as well. I essentially um, think of all of these pieces as landscapes. And um, it, being outside as a, as a, uh, native Northwesterner is uh, very important and always has been as part of my life as well. Um, I have a question over here was, uh, what are the steps or process you take to create your artwork? Like how does, how does it all begin? Um, my work is very uh, process driven. Um, I, I'm not afraid of a blank canvas. I'm not someone who has a problem with that. I just start. And so with um, painting and drawing, or, and that's why coming in here and just responding to the space was essentially a continuation of my painting process and that, that I just start. So in this case, I just started um, laying things around the room and, and seeing how they fit in the space. So um, essentially it's always a puzzle that I'm trying to figure out. And in terms of, um, you know, compositionally, um, I work until it 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 feels resolved, and how it feels resolved isn't something I'm just not able to articulate. I couldn't explain that. Well, I think that's an interesting uh, point because that was that was going to be my next question: is how do you stop? When, when is the stopping point? And I think that's a, an interesting question for uh, not only for your work, but for my work is like, you know, when's enough is enough. Um, and I don't know if, you know, I think we always think about it, like work is really always evolving and it never really stops. Even like, even after you say it's done, you hang it on the wall and 
let people come into the gallery and exhibit and experience it. And then like, you know, in this case, you've reappropriated and re allocated some of those memories and thoughts in the room. Um, but I, you know, it's, it's always a hard question to answer. Like, when do we actually stop the work? Yeah, it's, it's the impossible question to ask. <laughs> um, but I, you know, we all have our experience in working and we know when that moment is. Um, it, it's just really an intuitive decision that the artist makes. And I think it's, it's based on um, our sense of composition of light and dark, whatever elements we are using to create that. You know, and, and that question of when it's done. You know, sometimes I'm done with the piece and I come back and um, I'll make a whole new piece on top of the piece I thought was done. It, it um, you know, and then another piece, I'm sure you've all had this happen if you've been practicing for a while, a piece that seems to come too easy. Um, and it's hard to trust that but sometimes you get lucky. <laughs> so it's really a question of, you know, when to stop. I'm curious about the memories behind you. Um, are those specific memories or do they represent more abstract ideas of memory? They're more of an abstract idea, you know, of containers of memories that we hold the layers of memories that we have. And um, yeah, I, I, I guess that's all I have to say about that. Uh, where do you see your work going next? Um, I think um, I'm not really, um, well, let me start over. That's not very articulate. <laughs> um, right now, I am working on some, some more crochet pieces, and I will also be doing painting. And um, I've been working through these um, themes of mapping and layer and memory uh, the whole time I've been an artist. So, um, I may, I mean, I'm always exploring with materials. Materials are a big part of my practice. Um, it's not important to me that I express only in paint. I am, um, the materiality becomes more and more important as I um, move into the, the installation. Um, I, I'm hoping, well, I do have a residency at Oxbow in Georgetown next, about a year, a year out and, um, I'm playing around with ideas of how to create an installation in that space, which is um, both daunting and exciting. <laughs> um, I had originally hoped to create another, another um, portal in that space, um, but given COVID, that, that doesn't necessarily seem like a good plan at this point. Um, I will be doing more video. I, I love doing video, so um, going back and forth between working on the computer and then working with materiality of um, physical objects is sort of a, a fun, it, they kind of play off of each other in a weird sort of way. And I really enjoy that. So I'll, I'll be doing more of that as well. We have another question for you. Uh, is installation art underappreciated? I think so, yeah. I mean, um, especially I think here in Seattle and maybe other parts of the country, it's, um, I think that's why that experience of going into the art show where there were so many installations and um, it was so mind blowing. I mean, it would be so great to do something like that here um, well, we don't have any, well, maybe we do have empty office buildings. <laughs> Nobody's going to the office anymore. It would be um, really so much fun to have a floor in an office building and to have artists come in and do, 
you know, 12 installations in one place where, or maybe 30, I don't know. And um, it's just a different way of experiencing art that I find really exciting. Uh, well, on that note, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, well, on that note, did you um, you find it exciting? But what 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 do you find difficult in that kind of site responsive kind of process? Um. Well, yeah, it it it's definitely challenging to create something that um, will hold people's interest in the same way a painting might, because you're, you're asking people a different question of people, I think, in a sense. Um, so for me, it, it is about creating an experience. Um, so much more um, experiential because it often has sound and um, this particular piece isn't immersive the way that the, um, the installation I did last year um, call it the breath of a distant wind installation where you were pretty much immersed in the space. And so, yeah, the challenging in, I guess, in making any kind of um, work of art is to make it um, both challenging and interesting to the viewer to hold that interest. And so to create something on a, on a larger scale to do that, um, I guess it is always the same. Oh. Um, problem that you are solving, you know, and hopefully if I'm interested, somebody else is interested and I have to make it interesting to myself, first of all, and, and um, go from there. Another question for you. Do you foresee a time when your work might be land-based, um, installed outside rather than indoors? Yeah, why not? I mean, yes, I have thought about it. <laughs> so yeah, stay tuned. Who knows what's going to happen? I mean, I, yeah, I, I'm um, very open in the way that I approach my work. I mean, I'm not going to close down any options. <laughs> so if anybody out there has some land, they want an installation on, give me a call. <laughs> So I have a kind of a, another question about some of the process was, um, is there anything you fear within like when you engage in the process? Because we had a conversation about this at the beginning, like, you know, the whole transitioning from the gallery to the pop up and what to do. And um, I just, yeah. Well, yeah, I just wonder like what's in your, you know, what's in the, the opposite side of that spectrum? Well, um, I think I, I'd be lying if it wasn't um, um, a little scary to walk in here and see if I could pull something off or, you know, because this was site specific and responsive and, and because like um, everyone else with COVID, we didn't know what was going to happen. Um, yeah, I, I always have a fear that I'm not going to be able to pull it off. Um, that said, I have enough trust in myself that, um, and enough experience, hopefully at this point, um, that I, um, yeah, I, I trust that I can pull something off, whether it's fully successful. Um, you know, I guess I can't, I can judge that for myself and then others will make their own decisions. Right. I just had a question pop up. Um, during this pandemic, how do you keep in touch with the art community? Um, Zoom. <laughs> I um, I belong to a group that meets on Zoom once a week, and um, we used to just meet at a restaurant and have breakfast together. And now we've turned into a really uh, meaningful discussions about um, art, different topics of art, and that's um, been actually a, a really amazing experience. And so primarily just through Zoom meetings. Once in a while, um, if, if um, depending on somebody's studio space, if it's possible, 
on a one-on-one -on -one basis. I st we still do studio visits, but that's pretty limited. I'm curious to know how other people are staying in touch with the other artists during the pandemic. I'm currently collaborating with um, a couple artists and we're mailing work uh, to one another. And it's always a fun yeah. way to, to do it. Are they nearby or across? Uh, one, one is local, one's across the country, so. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, I have done some of that as well. Um, there is a um, art project, the USPS art project that uh, is specifically designed to support the post office. And I've done a couple of collaborations through that as well. And I'm sure a lot of you have done that. Um, yeah, I do a lot of um, Zoom meetings or lectures or webinars. Uh, what I found fascinating during this time is that uh, the amount of pivoting that museums are finding ways, alternate ways to show off their collection, which has opened the door for the curators to come in and like introduce the collection and give private tours. Um, one something you would never really have in you know going to museums is in access to just to listen to the curator's thoughts about the work. Um, and I've been watching a lot of um, you know museums from New York and Amsterdam and in Australia and just being able to have that connectivity for you know these cultural centers, which I used have been to before, now remotely, has been a wealth of information um, and insight. Along with like you know trying to figure out other ways to collaborate with other artists through Zoom, and I think that's the beauty about what you know the this un, unfortunate time, but also what comes out of it is you know we're we're all creative individuals and humans, and we're just trying to figure out how to use this tool at the time in order to do what we really want to do and that's just part of that process and sometimes it fails and sometimes it doesn't um, and i think you know one of our fears for this meeting was that you know if we were to lose internet connection then the meeting would go down um, you know, <laughs> yeah our worst fear hasn't been realized <laughs> so far <laughs> yeah. i mean just just earlier this morning i was having some contractors do some work you know, on the house and literally they're on the other side of the wall that's behind me and just pounding away. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, I have a meeting to go to and a host of reception. So <laughs> we'll see what that sounds like. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, that's part of the resilience of, of humans. We figure out a way. Right. We, always, yeah. we have several more questions that came in for you, Sue. Um, in relation to what we're speaking about, how do you start ne networking with other artists? How um, would a new artist go about uh, building a network? Yeah, that's that's a good question. I mean, I, I think we have some great tools available. I mean, Instagram, um, I'm a sucker for Instagram. As much as I hate it, I love it. <laughs> and, you know, it's it's a way that you can reach out to other artists and engage with them. Um, you know, if you are in school, you know, hopefully you, I, I guess I'd be curious to know where that, that person is in terms of um, if they're in school, if there's a way they can connect with other students. But, um, you know, just reach out to artists there as a group, I find some of the most generous people I know. And, um, you know, it, it makes it a little trickier with the pandemic, but, um, you know, ask for studio visits. And, you know, sometimes it's not going to work out, but um, sometimes it will. And I just, um, you know, find work that you like and follow that artist and um, maybe you can make a connection. Along those lines, as a former Edmonds, um, Edmonds College student and alumni, I think my first, um, first people in my art network were my instructors and, and then my peers. And there's also an art club on campus. So um, any students out there with wanting to de develop their network, feel free to reach out to myself, to Min, to any of your instructors. We're really happy to help um, you build that network. 
Yeah, and another uh, another option is um, start a group, start a group, Zoom group, um, maybe a discussion group, and invite a few people along, and and maybe they have some other people, some other artists they're interested in. Um, you can also do. Uh, I also belong with a group that does. Um, we do studio visits once a month via Zoom, and so there's lots of opportunities to do that as well. Um, one of the reasons that the Duwamish Artist River Artist Residency started came out of an idea that Fiona and I were kicking around one night. Like we couldn't go on a residency for various reasons in our life, and so we thought, uh, "What do we do?" And so we just came up with this idea and followed that path and um, invited some artists to go along with us and hang out down on the river for a week one summer. There was no intention for that to go on for 10 years and yet here we are. So, um, you know, I think just start with one person and, and um, things develop, be open to how they might develop and you never, you, things might happen you'd never imagine. Yeah, I have to agree, like, you know, with um, just reaching out to artists and you'll be surprised um, if you just ask them a lot of times artists will, are willing to talk because they like to talk about their work and their process and um, just simply asking the question. I think, you know, I, I'm like Adi, my, my first inspiration was my instructors in college and then and then my students I was with. And then, you know, um, I think the, the process for all of us was like, you know, if you don't ask a question, you're not going to know the answer. If you don't know the answer, you're not going to be able to move forward with anything. And it's better to ask a question than not. Um, and then just a you know, note for everybody on the call, um, Edmonds College does have, the Edmonds College Visual Arts is set up on Instagram. Um, it's, it's the most of the time it's just showing off, showcasing a lot of uh, things that are happening in the industry, which is a great way to look at um, artwork from photography to art to graphic design. Um, and also it uh, showcases student work from time to time um, that we, as much as we can get that we can put up there uh, on a regular basis, but it's a way, you know, Instagram is a great way. Um, I've actually emailed questions to various artists during the pandemic and surprisingly they responded. Um, you'll be, you'll be surprised. Uh, just ask a question simply. Yeah. And I'm, I'm someone who didn't go to art school. I, um, had a whole nother life before I went down this, this path of art making and my community started when I rented a studio outside of my home. And that was um, an amazing um, way to get to know other artists. Some of those people I've known for years and um, their dear friends. Thank you for bringing that up because one of our questions is, uh, could you speak a little bit about your journey to becoming an artist? Um, I, yeah, I, I actually worked as a litigation paralegal for about 20 years and um, I, uh, for health reasons, <laughs> due to stress, decided to make a career change. I, I've done a lot of different ways in my life. And so um, after that, I started a personal chef business, which I did for, for quite a while. And as I was starting to get that business ramped up, um, I took an art class at um, Bellevue um, Art Museum. And that sort of led me here. You know, I, I've been doing this for 20 years. So um, yeah, it just took on a life of its own. In our last minute together, uh, one last question. When you say perspective, do you mean simply looking at things from a different angle or do you have more of a personal meaning? Um, I, I mean that on a, a number of different levels. Um, on a personal level, changing our perspective to learn um, another person's point of view, um, a viewpoint you might you know, shift your viewpoint in the landscape and discover a whole new um, element to the landscape. And, um, you know, then there is the, the little literal perspective of, um, I lost my train of thought there. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, any way that you can interpret perspective. Um, I like to play with um, space. So the spatial perspective as well. All of those elements are at play in my work. Excellent. Well, we've come to 3.30. Uh, I want to honor everybody's time and um, and just uh, acknowledge uh, Sue Daniels and thank you very much for joining us today and for your work at the college. Um, it's uh, an exhibit I think that unfortunately we can't all physically experience, but through Zoom, uh, hopefully we can provide some simulation of that experience uh, today. Uh, thank you everybody for joining us, Audi. Thank you for uh, moderating the chat box and asking the questions and, and co-hosting with me as always. Um, and uh, thank you everybody. Um, yeah, thank you everyone for being here. And thank you, Min and Adi and Lorenzo as well. Yeah, Lorenzo, too. thanks for making the, 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 the footage available or documenting this process. Um, we are intending to publish the, um, the whole entirety of this uh, reception um, at some point. Um, and then uh, Lorenzo is going to be basically making a video that's going to be kind of featuring um, the different perspectives for our um, our meeting together, and, and and he's going to also show some uh, some footage of the installation that that will come at a later date. And we're hoping that either one of these will live on the website so we can have an archive of all of our events uh, going forward. But uh, be safe, everyone. Take care. And again, thank you, everybody, for being here today and taking time to uh, learn about arts and culture in Snohomish County. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Bye.